Hello, and welcome to IDSL 870 Marketing and Community Engagement. Welcome to the course. I'm Dr. Josh Bullock, and I look forward to facilitating this course for you the remainder of the term. I'd like to talk quickly about the course itself and the things that you might consider learning throughout the course. The course will look at exploring the theory and practices of this concept of marketing and community engagement, two extremely critical topics in the community college world. Think about it. Community is part of the very essence of who we are. So why wouldn't we focus on the notion of community engagement? We're going to talk about the leadership challenges that are inherent with us in community colleges in developing stronger marketing programs and developing stronger means of engaging our communities. Well, we of course are going to learn a number of things throughout the course. And the first is for you to identify the role of community college leaders in applying the marketing community engagement concepts into the community college environment. My goal is to give you tools for community engagement, give you tools that are going to help you and your institution better connect with those you serve. Hopefully you're also going to assess various marketing and branding strategies and tools. Again, looking at the toolbox that will be available to you, we'll be looking at concepts, thoughts, ideas for how you can better use marketing and how you can better brand your institution. We'll look at analyzing relevant external and internal publics and the influence of each group. Think about legislators. Think about your media. Think about your taxpayers. We'll learn strategies and discuss how we connect with each of those groups in a positive and hopefully productive means. You'll gather information using appropriate research strategies, and you'll create a comprehensive situational analysis and marketing, marketing and community engagement strategy. All of that ideally will lead to the development of an in-depth marketing and community engagement plan for you and your institution. That plan will include clearly stated goals, and objectives, and hopefully be something that will be practical and useful in the real world of your organization. Now we'll have a lot of things that occur during the course, and a lot of course materials will come into play. As we meet for our face-to-face -face session in a short time, you'll have some handouts and materials. You'll be able to use not only at the face-to-face -face session, but throughout the course and hopefully beyond. I have a real treat for you in the occasional leadership perspective videos. I've connected with some seasoned and expert community college leaders from across the nation to provide you feedback with how marketing and community engagement topics really work in the community college world. You'll have weekly readings, and you have a lot of week weekly readings for the first session. A few of those we'll talk about today, but many of those we'll refer to in the face-to-face -face session. You'll be conducting some hands-on research of your own community, of your own institution, to give you a better sense and idea as to what you're dealing with as you look at your community and you look at your own institution. We'll talk through some case studies to learn what, what community college issues and problems do arise surrounding marketing and community engagement. How would you handle those situations? And we can reflect on how the leaders at the time did handle the situations. And finally, much as you're participating in today, we will have a series of weekly video lectures. I promise you I'll try to keep those lectures to 10 to 15 minutes uh, and really cover the high level elements of what we'll be talking about and hopefully bring some context to your readings. Now, how will the course move? Well, this course, Marketing and Community Engagement, is much more practical than most doctoral courses because let's face it, Marketing and Community Engagement is a practical element of our lives. The first four weeks are going to be much heavier on the readings and the theory, <clears throat> and the next three weeks are going to be much heavier on the application. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll end with a marketing and community engagement strategy and plan. I would now like to talk a bit about marketing and its applications to higher education. For those of you who have a marketing background, you can sit back and relax and maybe pick up a nugget or two. For those of you who don't have a marketing or community engagement background, spend some time thinking about how marketing might impact you. We're going to talk about the marketing mix and the various components that impact the marketing mix. I do want to point out that in the middle of all that we do is what we would call our customer, 
and it's adding value to that customer. Now I know, I know you're probably thinking right now that but we don't call our students customers. We call them students. And in some cases it might be offensive to use the term customer. But for all intents and purposes, students really are our customers. They're academic customers. And it's about building valued relationships with those students. We'll talk a little bit later in the class about the next ring beyond the customer value and relationships. The segmentation, the targeting, the positioning, the differentiation. But I want to spend some time today on the marketing mix elements, the primary marketing mix elements, the product, the price, the place, and the promotion. Now, marketing mixes, I mentioned, are how we utilize these tools. So it's all these tactical tools, and truly the product itself, the price, the place, and the promotion, they are tools that we use as marketers. These are tools that we blend up that we want in our students or our potential students hopefully satisfying their needs and their wants. We develop programs because we know not only are there businesses that will hire those graduates, or there are academic programs and four-year institutions that will transfer those students in, and we also know that we have those programs because there are students who want to increase their knowledge in that discipline. That is satisfying needs and wants of our customer base. The marketing mix, as I mentioned, is made up of four primary elements. And one of the things we'll talk about when we're done, and you'll read that in the article today, the concept of the marketing mix and its elements by Dr. Khan, is that I'm going to present to you the four primary marketing elements. But there are others. You can look at the seven Ps instead of the four Ps that we call the product, price, place, and promotion. You'll read about that. And I want you to digest that and think about those concepts that Dr. Khan presents. But today I want to talk about the primary four elements of product, price, place, and promotion. Think about the product. The product that we offer our students are the programs, whether it be a certificate, an associate degree, a diploma, and the services that we offer them. Those wraparound services, whether it be financial aid, whether it be registration assistance, if you have a TRIO program or another grant funded program, those are all services that are part of the product that we offer to our students. When we look at the product, we have to consider the variety of our offerings. You may be in a smaller college that has 30 to 40 programs or fewer. You may be in a large college that has 150 to 160 programs or certificates to offer your students. That variety helps define our product for our institution. Quality also helps to define our product, knowing you're the best. Uh, many of you may be Aspen Award winners or have been nominated for an Aspen Award or recognized by CNN Money, or US News or World Reports, or another organization. And my guess is you capitalize on that. Think about the evaluation tools you have in your institution to monitor the effectiveness and the quality of your programs. Think about accreditation. Many of us think that the accreditation is probably something that uh, is more work than it's worth, but the reality is our creditors help ensure quality of our programs, our product, and that's something that we should be very cognizant of as we work through our accreditation product process. The design of our products, do you offer courses in a hybrid format such as this where students meet face-to-face, -face, they have a component that's online, do you offer all face-to-face -face courses, do you have weekend courses, do you have evening courses, what tools do you use in the design of that product, what features do you have, how do you label that product, believe it or not, brand name, even in higher education, is a big deal. If you were to run into someone who said they attended Harvard, what would you think of them? We pride ourselves on the names of our institutions. An example is, recently, in the last 10 years, we've seen a number of community colleges starting to divest themselves of the community in their name. For instance, Valencia Community College in Orlando, Florida, is now Valencia College. They have divested themselves because they also see their product expanding into bachelor's degrees. They see their services expanding. That brand name makes a difference. How we package our products impacts our students. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, the services that we provide to enhance the programs that we offer to our students. The next item of the four Ps is the price of the product. And price does impact students' abilities or desire to purchase our services and our programs. The price of our product, 
We've seen a resurgence in community colleges in the last decade or so because as university tuition fees have grown exponentially, as community college tuition and fees grow, it's by a much smaller amount. Students can attend a community college, as you're well aware, for three to four thousand dollars a year versus a university, which may be with room and board, four, five, or six times that amount. We see colleges discounting for students. Many private institutions discount tuition, very few publics do, but we do offer scholarships. Many of us support our own internal foundation. That's part of discounting. We do all that we can to make sure that students have the ability to pay for their education, whether it's providing them a payment period with which they can make payments or a payment plan by issuing them essentially credit terms. Issuing a payment plan may mean that the student can pay a certain amount each month over the course of their semester so they can stay enrolled in our programs. The place also has a tremendous impact on how we serve our students. Think about the online environment. Online education today is ubiquitous. We see it everywhere. That is a place, such as for you as students who have busy lives and truly can't attend a fully face-to-face -face program. The channels, the assortment of what we offer, the locations. Some of you may have campuses in multiple locations within your district. That ensures that the product, your programs, is accessible to your students. And then finally, promotion. And we'll spend a good deal of time on the various promotional tools throughout the course. But essentially, think about the value and power of advertising. Many community colleges are frankly outspent by their university rivals. Budgets in community colleges for marketing could be one-tenth to one-twentieth of what you might find in peer university institutions. But all that means is we have to use our resources more wisely. We have to be smarter about the tools that we're using to promote our product. We personally sell. Think about your recruiters who are out in the high schools or your recruiters who are attending adult events within your community. Building those face-to-face -face relationships with the students and their community members. And then finally, a big tool that's used in community college and has a lot more room for growth is public relations. And let's face it, public relations for the most part is free. And it's a tool that we can use to truly engage our community in a variety of ways and about a variety of issues and topics. And again, we will talk much more about that as the course progresses. Finally, I want to wrap up talking about your Marketing Myopia article. Ted Levitt did an incredible job of framing how we should think about the business that we're in. Have you given that thought? One of your goals for the next week before our face-to-face -face session is to think about what business are you really in? What do you truly offer as an educator? And how do you meet your customers' needs better than others out there? Let me share a quick story. Fifteen years ago, my wife and I uh, enjoyed watching movies at home, back in the old VCR days, as uh, DVD players were just coming out. And we would spend oftentimes a Friday night or a Saturday morning at the Blockbuster store, looking through the movies and determining what do we want to watch that weekend. Well, the reality is, today, 15 years later, Blockbuster is no longer in existence. We now have Netflix. We now have Amazon Prime. We now have HBO Go and a litany of other tools to download media content. Essentially, Netflix and all the bright media content that's out there bankrupted Blockbuster. Is there something else out there that could replace us as community colleges? Are we in the business of programs? Or are we in the business of learning? How might our world change and how might we adapt? As you think about the marketing and community engagement concepts, that's something I want you to think about for the remainder of the entire course and challenge yourself and your peers to think about those questions. Who are we? I look forward to meeting you at the face-to-face -face session and please don't hesitate to call or to email should I be able to answer any questions about the homework assignments, the reading, the discussion boards, or if you simply want to discuss the topics that we're discussing in the class, or that you're reading in the literature. Until then, be safe, be well, and farewell for now.